Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. My name's Charlie, and today we're gonna continue working on our lovely island of quinoa by building a library for fauna. I feel like a lot of the time I find fauna sitting next to some flowers and reading a book, so it only made sense to embrace that and build a whole library around her house. It's like an extreme makeover home edition where the kid's like, oh, I kinda like horses, and then they turn their bedroom into a stable and their bed is a hay bale and their parents turn into horses. Yeah, we're doing that for fauna, but with books. I started off the build with these brick castle walls because I wanted it to be more of an old style library than a modern one. With this vision in mind, I placed brick walls down in sort of a staggered way to avoid having a flat surface and this added dimension already and kind of made it look like a real building. Getting the front of the library just right was proving to be a bit of a challenge, but after playing around with different kinds of walls, I was able to find a configuration that really made it seem like this was a library that you could just walk into. With the exterior basically complete, I started to focus on the interior. And you know when you go into a Barnes and Noble or like a Books a Million and there's always a Starbucks or some coffee shop there? That is basically the idea here. The plan was to have Fauna's library sort of like the first floor and Marshall's coffee shop above it. To blend these two areas together a little more, I added indents in the cliffside below the upper level and fit some bookshelves in there. Then I moved on to the flooring and I decided to go with a sort of brick pattern to match the brick exterior before working on the real meat and potatoes of the library. In truth though, I was having a really hard time decorating the interior, so I let it simmer on the back burner. In other words, I forgot about it for a month. But as the sun came out again and the snow melted away, I got back to work hacking down these cliffs with little to no regard for Marshall's outdoor seating or the structural integrity of the island. At this point, it felt like Fauna's house was just kinda in the way, so I spoke with Nook and after moving it to the back corner, I began working on decorations. I added a line of desks along the left wall with stationery and books, as well as these green banker lamps. I love these lamps. Something about their color is so cozy to me and they're just one of my favorite parts about old libraries, so I'd definitely be including a lot more later on. With Fauna's house now neatly in the corner, I had a lot more room to play with. After filling in the rest of the area with brick paths, I plopped down some more desks and tables and placed various library-related items around. And after adding some greenery, I realized the outside of the library was still pretty barren, so as a first step, I put a bike out front and a fire hydrant. The little grassy patch in the corner here was also a promising little piece of real estate, so I cleaned it up a bit and added an apple tree. I planned to put a park bench there, but I got distracted by other seating options, switching out the log chairs in the library for turkey day chairs, which honestly didn't look much better. I was really struggling with what chairs to put in there, I just don't know. I also stumbled across these wooden pillars, which I positioned next to the stairs for the cafe, and it kind of helped make the area feel more building-like. And to achieve that cozy local library vibe, I spent a a lot of time collecting stacks of books that I set around and also added a tasteful amount of clutter. And with a bench, a birdhouse, and one of those adorable free libraries, the outside portion was pretty much finished up. As the finishing touch, I ordered some simple chairs, which arrived the next day, so I switched out those ugly turkey chairs, and I thought they fit way better in the library. So with this change done, we had completed Fauna's library. Hello, welcome back. It is time for the final tour of Fauna's library. Marshall's like creeping in the background. I don't know why. So to start our tour, we are just gonna begin in this little tiny like green area. And I actually really like this. The kind of vibe we have going is like, this is the city district type of area. And then over here, just having this splash of greenery. I think it, it's really cute. And a lot of libraries I've been to have like little gardens out front and stuff. I honestly think it would be nice to turn this kind of area into to part of the library's garden as well. So that's something I've been chewing on, like, like a piece of gum. What? Moving on. I also love the inclusion of this little like mini free book library. I have a lot of these in my area and I always stop to check them. They're super, super cute. And like the little detail of this bike here, like someone biked to get to the library to get a book. It's freaking adorable. And then we come to the library itself, which is like a brick exterior. It looks kind of medieval-y. It's a very old library. And I just love the way it looks and it matches the lamps that we have around the whole island so well. I could cry. And walking in, ooh. 
Ooh. So this left side of the library here, there's like a bunch of desks over here, like study materials. I love the way that like all the little items I put on there blend together. Like there's like a computer, stack of documents, like a sketchbook kind of thing. And it just looks so good. I also think that these simple chairs were definitely the right choice. I, I just, I had such a hard time figuring out what matched with these desks because I like the lecture desks, but I could not figure out what to put with them. But this, oh, this is it. We also have these bookshelves in the back, which I think are kind of cool because they act as like a wall, but then it's also books like you would have in a library. Now on this lower part of the library, we've got some like stuff scattered around a lot of stacks of books that I placed around just because I want it to be like an old library, but also kind of like a cozy, tiny, like hometown type of library. So we just have like little sewing kits, like a, a paint thing over here, which is definitely not allowed in the library, etc, etc. Another study desk right here. There's like an antique map. Like this is the map to Atlantis or something just sitting out <laughs> next to a cup of coffee. I don't know. There's also like a hidden little table here. I didn't really know like what to put here. So I just put like another random little study area, a globe, some books. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I love the way that the library looks. It's like the perfect combination of serious library books, but then also just like a very lived in space where people come to work. You got like somebody over here probably working working away. But one of the coolest things I think about this build is that it's not done yet. Oh no. I know you watched me build it, so you already know that, but I, I'm so excited. Connected to the library is Marshall's Coffee Shop, this old place. I know. I definitely want to do some stuff up here. I have these kind of like barren patches up here. I think it'd be cool to put bookshelves back here and maybe some more of those wooden pillars right here, just so it's kind of like if you look upward, it's like the library goes higher. I haven't really figured that out yet, but I definitely want to do something with that in the future. And I just honestly think it's so cool the way that these two blend together because I know like a lot of bookstores and book kind of places have a little coffee shop and it just makes sense. You know, you buy a book, you want to like sit down and read it somewhere. Now I'm going to address the elephant in the room and this is very serious. I need you all eyes, all ears on me, please. That includes you, grasshopper. Hush. It's a library. Be quiet. Thank you. No. So you may be noticing there's something a little bit different about the library as it was before and the library as it was now. A lot of things have happened. The island changes. I change. We grow. We learn. Stop. <laughs> I'm trying to have a serious conversation. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it. And it's devastating, but... Fauna no longer lives here. So Fauna's library, she doesn't even live in it. I mean, regardless, she did inspire it, which is half the battle. But let me see if I can show you who our new librarian is. I fired Fauna. It needed to be done. Don't show any of this. Don't show any of this. This is all spoilers. And there she is, our new librarian. Ah, this is so relaxing. Once I sit down, it's like I put roots and I can't move anymore. You might find me. Okay, well, I need you to like run your library. So can you please? That is right. We replaced Fauna with Diana. I didn't do it intentionally. It just kind of happened that way. But honestly, I think she makes a pretty good librarian too. Any sweet little deer would be a lovely librarian in my book. In my book, but I'm too... Okay. But yeah, that is all I have for today. That is the entire tour of Fauna's, well, now Diana's library. I would love to hear what you think about it. So definitely let me know in the comments. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Without further ado, I have nothing left to say. I'm a speechless little pineapple. I will We'll see you guys next time. Bye!